I'm the Reverend Allison Moore. I'm the interim pastor at Christ Church in Manhasset, and I've come with an Easter message. But I've come with a message that begins with Holy Week. In fact, it begins with a particular story in the Gospel of John where Jesus is friends with Mary and Martha of Bethany and their brother Lazarus. And Jesus has gone away and Lazarus has gotten sick. And Mary and Martha send for Jesus and Jesus doesn't come. And Lazarus dies and Jesus doesn't come. It's four days before Jesus gets there. And both the sisters are annoyed. Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And the crowd said, if Jesus is so special, he could have saved Lazarus. And Lazarus, Jesus asks to go to Lazarus' tomb. And when he gets to the tomb, he looks at the tomb, and the stone is covering the door, and Jesus weeps. Jesus is weeping with Mary and Martha, who are grieving their brother. Jesus is weeping for his own end of his ministry. Jesus is weeping for the futility of his plans. Did he accomplish anything? Did he do what he wanted to do? And he's weeping with all the people who are weeping there. He stands at the tomb and weeps. So where are our tombs? Where are the ends of relationships or the resentments that are poisoning a friendship, but they're not, they're a little juicy, so we don't want to let go of them yet. Where is illness, unexpected illness, chronic illness, aging parents, children in trouble? Where is Jesus in the injustice of the world? Too many kids killed by guns, too many kids addicted, killed by overdoses, too much pain, too much blood, fires in Paris, tragedies in Yemen, war in Syria, war everywhere. And Jesus, at these tombs, weeps. And we know what it is to stand at a tomb and weep. What we don't know is what comes next, these odd stories of the resurrection. Because again, in the Gospel of John, Early in the morning, while it is still dark, Mary makes her way to Jesus' tomb. And she's now in front of Jesus' tomb. She knows that Jesus, that Jesus raised Lazarus, but she also knows that Lazarus' resurrection put in motion Jesus' betrayal, his crucifixion, his death. And all she wants to do, do is anoint his body, and the door to the tomb is open, and there she calls to two male disciples, John and Peter, and they do a sort of race to the tomb, and one stands at the door, and the other one goes in and sees, yes, there is in fact no body, and they both go home. Because that's sometimes what we do at the tomb. We give up, and we go home, and we try to go back to life as usual, and we try to pretend it really isn't this bad. And Mary stands at Jesus' tomb and weeps. And through her tears, she sees a man. Maybe it's the gardener. Maybe the gardener knows what he did with Jesus' body. Just tell me where you put the body, and I can anoint him, and I can be on my way. And then he calls her name. And this gardener is Jesus. And Mary's world that had ended begins to crack open a bit. And that for me is resurrection, where we stay at the tomb long enough and we call or we weep or we rage, we stand at the tomb and then we see something that might be hope, but it's a little dim. And so we beg for what we want and the voice comes and says, I am here, says our name, says, I love you. The stories of the resurrection are incredibly odd. There's one where Jesus comes through locked doors and offers peace. There's one when Jesus takes a 
piece of fish and eats it to prove that he's flesh and blood. There's one where he's baking on fish on the beach for his friends who are out fishing and there's a miraculous catch. There's one where two disciples are on their way back to Emmaus and he appears and they invite him in and he's known in the breaking of the bread and he disappears. These are odd stories. And the instruction to Mary is not, hey, come with me to the temple. I've been raised from the dead. I am now going to make a gigantic proclamation to everyone that I'm alive and that God wins and that Rome doesn't and religious authorities didn't know anything. Here I am. He doesn't do that. He shows up in these odd encounters with people who know him. And the at the end of each encounter, he says, go and tell. Go into your world. Go into the world where, in Juno Diaz's world, the, end, the tomb is the end of the world as we knew it. And if we're there and are faithfully standing, hope, a door opens. The tomb is rolled back a bit. Hope happens, life happens, love happens in mysterious and unpredictable and uncontrollable ways. Jesus is telling all of us to call, to believe, and then to go and tell, to listen to our neighbors, to put ourselves at the tombs of the world, to weep with the people who are at the tombs, and to stand there in faith, trusting that somehow, in some miraculous and inexplicable way, Jesus will be with us. And Jesus will walk through us through the next step. And where we thought there was no hope, we will find a path toward hope. And where we thought there was no love, we will find a path toward more love. And when we thought there was no healing, we will find a way to keep on keeping on, moving with Jesus into resurrection life. I hope you find the courage to stand at the tomb and weep and find hope and move on and go and share the good news this Easter. Amen. Thank you.